All right, uh, this is part two of our tile map making video. Um, if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and go watch that first because we're going to be building on that same game as before. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, add a link in the description for that. Yep. So um, in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our same tile map game before and we're going to be adding a new mechanic to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I've made a demo version of the game here and let me just show off real quick what happens. So um, I start out in this room and as you can see, there are the stones that are blocking my way. Um, to get past those stones, I'm going to have to walk over, press this button, which causes the stones to disappear, and I can go to the treasure chest to win the game. Seems good. So this will cover a few more concepts, um, putting objects into our game that you can interact with, and also um, dynamically changing walls. So we had some things that started as walls, the doors, mm -hmm. um, and when we pressed the button, they stopped being walls and just became something that we could pass through. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. All right, um, so now I've loaded up the game that we created at the end of the last video. Um, we've got our monkey, we can uh, move around. Let me go ahead and focus the scenario real quick. And we can uh, walk down to the treasure chest and win the game. Okay. So um, we need to first add a button to our game for the player to press. Okay. We need to add doors to the game that can be opened. These will be walls and then we'll stop being walls once we press the button. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be it for this video. So um, I'm going to open up the tile map editor and the first thing we're going to do is find something to be a wall. Okay. So generally I look in the miscellaneous category um, just for something that looks wall-like. Mm -hmm. And you can see the one used earlier there? Yeah, let's just use that one again. It's pretty good. Yeah. So we're going to be using this uh, little pyramid type block. Mm -hmm. Half-like looking thing. Yeah. And we'll go ahead and put it um, to be our doorway for the this game. Um, so we're going to have to do one other thing real quick. Right now these are not marked as walls, so if I go back to the game, see I can walk right through them. Mm -hmm. So again what we're going to do is we're going to toggle wall mode and go ahead and draw walls on top of our door. Perfect. So now when I go back to the game, it is now unwinnable. Yes, the monkey cannot get through and this is not a fun game. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go ahead and add our other thing, which is thankfully on the same page as our pyramid block, which is a button. Um, there's two versions of this button. There's the pressed and not pressed, sorry, not with the pressed and the not pressed. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna grab the not pressed one and put it up here in the corner. So the idea is when the player is, goes up and presses this button, the button will disappear and so will the doorways. Seems good. All right. Okay, so we want to handle the event when the player overlaps with the button. So um, just like before, we already have an on sprite of player overlaps block. So let's go ahead and duplicate that. So you see it's grayed out right now. Um, that's because it's the same as this one up here. So then when we change it to the button, it'll be ungrayed out because you can actually use it now. Yep, so it'll pop back to life. So um, this time we're going to actually use some of the variables that are in this top uh, um, uh, block. Specifically, we're going to be using the location. Mm -hmm. So the location is the spot at which the collision happens, or where the overlap happens. So in this case, it's going to be the tile location for the button. Mm -hmm. when, I, when the monkey overlaps the button, um, it's going to be passing this location, which happens to be 0, 1, 2, 1. So it'll be 2, 1. Um, we're not going to be reading those values though, we're just going to be using the blocks in the scene category. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we want to do when we hit the button is we want to make the button go away. So if we go ahead into our tile map, maybe we should zoom in on that area of the code a little bit. Yeah, let's do that real quick, that's a good idea. So we're going to set a tile at a location. Mm -hmm. So this is a shadow block right now where we can type in a location if we wanted. But um, because we have this location parameter up here, I can just click and drag it into here. Mm -hmm. So this right now will set the transparent tile at location when we overlap with the button. And if I try that out real quick, we'll see it turns into a black void. Mm -hmm. That looks more like a trap right now, so probably should change it to match the rest of the ground. Yep. So we'll just go ahead and grab our room tile that we were using before, and now when I overlap it, it'll turn into that tile. All right, so now let's actually do something um, to change the, uh, the state of the doors. 
So if there's another helpful block in the scene category, which gets um, all of the locations of a specific tile. So it's this block here, the array of all blank locations, and I'll go ahead and drag that out. So I'm gonna need one other block from the loops category. And that is this for element value of list block. Mm -hmm. So what does a for of loop do, Joey? A for of loop goes through an array and it has one iteration when it happens one time for each value in that array. Yep. So just like this location variable that we had before, this value is going to be set once for every single time whatever tile we select here shows up in the game. Mm -hmm. So if I select the diamonds, well the pyramid, um, when this code runs, it's going to run once for every single one of these pyramid-shaped blocks that appear in my program. Mm -hmm. So this is a good chance for me to just get rid of all of them. Mm -hmm. So um, let's go ahead and do that, just like we did for the button. Mm -hmm. So I'll drag out this location, because I want to do it at the value. Yeah, because right. location still means the location of the button, where now we want the location that it, we are iterating over in that array. All right, so let's go ahead and try this code out real quick. I'll go and hit the button, and aha, my door are gone. Let me uh, go to victory. But alas, Invisible I have walls. changed the tile, but I've not changed the state of the wall. Ugh. So this is still a wall, it's invisible, but I can't go through it. So there's one other block I'm going to need, and if we'll go into the scene category, we'll find it right here, the set wall block. Mm -hmm. So this takes in a location, just like our other one, and I'm going to drag in value again. Oop, oh, wrong one, there we go. And um, the wall can either be on or off. So in this case, we want it to no longer stop the player from moving, so we're gonna set wall to off. So let's try this out real quick. Make this full screen. Monkey's going to walk up, hit the button. Our tiles disappear just like before, but this time, we can, can walk win. through. And now I can walk over to the chest and win the game. Perfect. So um, this is going to be the end of this particular game that we're working on. I hope you've learned some things. Um, in this video, we kind of covered over, over how to get some basic objects and then how to interact with those objects once you have the player in the game. Yep. So we'll be posting a link to this code in the description of the video. Um, thanks.